Hi, my name is Miss Lovelady and I teach third grade ELA at Sally Humble Elementary School. Today we're going to read a book called Carla's Sandwich and I think this book is so funny but it also has a very good lesson to learn. And then after we read this book, we're going to analyze uh, the main character, Carla. So if you've done that in some of your classes at school, you're gonna be really ready for this. So this book is called Carla's Sandwich. It's written by Debbie Herman and illustrated by Sheila Bailey. And I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do. Carla brought weird sandwiches to school. Buster noticed it first. He was sitting next to Carla at lunch one Monday. Ew, what are you eating? Buster asked. It's all green and slimy. It's an olive pickle and green bean sandwich, said Carla. I made it myself. Would you like some? I brought extra. No way, said Buster, pinching his nose. That's gross. It's not gross, said Carla. It's different. I like to be different. It's not different, said Buster. It's gross. And he went to sit next to Leslie instead. On Tuesday, Carla's sandwich was long with something yellow and white oozing out at the sides. What in the world is that? asked Leslie. It's my banana cottage cheese delight, said Carla, on a tasty toasted baguette. Bananas and cottage cheese? asked Leslie, sticking out her tongue. Ugh. That's disgusting. It's not disgusting, said Carla. It's creative. It's disgusting, said Leslie. And she went to sit next to Nady instead. On Wednesday, Carla's sandwich was orange and brown and lumpy. It crunched when she bit into it. Ugh, oh, said Nady, who was sitting next to her now. What's that? I call it Carla's Crunch, said Carla. It's peanut butter, crackers, and cheddar cheese and a lovely pita bread. I brought extra, would you like some? No way, said Nady, scrunching his face. That's sick. It's not sick, said Carla, it's unique. It's sick, said Nady, and he went to sit next to Marcus instead. On Thursday, Carla brought a chopped liver, potato chip, and cucumber sandwich. On Friday, she brought a sardine and mustard sandwich with sunflower seeds. By Monday, no one wanted to sit next to Carla, so she ate by herself. At the end of the day, Miss Pimento made an announcement. Tomorrow we will have a picnic. Hooray, everyone shouted. A picnic, yippee! The next day, when the lunch bell rang, the kids ran to get their picnic lunches. I have peanut butter and jelly, Nady announced to the class. I have bologna, said Leslie. Tuna, called Buster. Hey, Carla, what do you have? Carla didn't answer. It's probably a ketchup, spinach, and jelly bean sandwich, joked Buster. He and Leslie howled, so did Nady. It is not, said Carla. Let's have some quiet in here, said Miss Pimento, or we won't be able to have our picnic. The class was suddenly silent. Then the children followed Miss Pimento two by two down the hall, out the door, and down the block to the park. All right, everyone, said Miss Pimento. Find a place to sit and bon appetit. Carla took a bite of her sandwich. Yuck, said Buster, pointing at Carla's lunch. What is that, a worm sandwich? For your information, said Carla, it's a lettuce, tomato, raisin, bean sprout, pretzel, and mayonnaise sandwich. I call it the Combo Deluxe. Looks more like a Wormbo Deluxe, teased Buster. Leslie and Nady burst out laughing. Buster rummaged through his knapsack. Uh-oh, he said quietly. He rummaged some more. Uh-oh, he said again. He dumped everything out of his bag. I can't believe it, Buster said sadly. I forgot my sandwich. That's awful, said Leslie, biting into her bologna sandwich. A real bummer, said Nady, chomping on his peanut butter and jelly. Soon, everyone was eating. Everyone except Buster. Carla looked at Buster. She looked at her sandwich. She looked back at Buster. You can have one of mine, she offered. I brought extra. Some kids snickered. No thanks, said Buster glumly. I'm not that desperate.
Doris ate her egg salad sandwich, and Rufus ate his tuna. Herbert ate his salmon salad sandwich, and Barbara ate her turkey. Buster's mouth began to water. Buster looked at Carla's sandwich. Maybe bean sprouts aren't so bad, he thought. It's really quite delicious, said Carla, catching Buster's glance. Buster quickly turned away. Susan ate her corned beef sandwich, and Harris munched his taco. Fabio ate his chicken sandwich, and Gordon ate his meatloaf. Buster was growing hungrier by the minute, and his stomach growled loudly. Raisins are kind of fun, he thought, and who doesn't like pretzels? Marcus ate his cheese sandwich, and Darcy ate her bagel. Buster eyed Carla's sandwich again. You don't know what you're missing, Carla sang out. Buster couldn't take it anymore. He looked around. Everyone was busy eating. No one was watching him. Okay, he whispered to Carla. Okay, what? asked Carla. Okay, can I have one? he whispered again. Can you have one what? asked Carla. Buster blurted impatiently. Can I please have one of your sandwiches? Everyone looked up. Carla smiled and handed Buster a combo deluxe. Buster examined the lettuce, tomato, raisin, bean sprout, pretzel, and mayonnaise sandwich carefully. He looked at Leslie, then Nady, then Carla. Then he took a very small bite. All eyes were watching as he chewed and swallowed. Well, asked Leslie impatiently. Well, asked Nady. Buster didn't say anything. He looked at everyone and took another bite. And another, and another. I can't believe he's eating it, said Nadie in disgust. What does it taste like, Buster? asked Leslie. Is it gross? Buster didn't answer. He was too busy eating. When the last bite was gone, Buster licked his fingers and smacked his lips. Yum, he said. That was the best sandwich I ever ate. It was? asked Nadie in horror. It was? asked Leslie in dismay. It was, said Buster, smiling at Carla. Carla beamed. I bet you'd all enjoy the combo deluxe, said Carla. Who'd like to try some? Slowly, Leslie raised her hand. Then Nadie raised his. Then Darcy, Susan, Rufus, and Fabio. Soon, all the kids had their hands in the air. Carla took her last sandwich, broken into small pieces, and handed them out to everyone. Wow, said Leslie, tasting her piece. This is terrific. Yeah, said Nadie. It tastes great. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring a creative sandwich, too, said Leslie. Maybe it'll be a mustard sandwich with baked beans and french fries. What do you think of that, Carla? Sounds good, said Carla. It's definitely creative. I'll bring a spaghetti and soy sauce sandwich, said Buster, as he sat down next to Carla. Yum, said Carla and Leslie together. I don't know what I'm bringing yet, said Nadie, but it'll be unique. The next day, everyone in Miss Pimento's class brought an unusual sandwich to school. There was an asparagus and salad dressing sandwich, a pistachio and tangerine sandwich, and even a pizza sandwich. What did you bring today, Carla? asked Buster. I'm not telling, said Carla. You'll have to wait until lunchtime. The morning seemed to last forever, but finally the lunch bell rang. While Buster was munching away on his spaghetti and soy sauce sandwich, he glanced over at Carla. This time her sandwich was not green, it was not slimy or lumpy, and nothing was oozing out at the sides. So what kind of sandwich is that? Buster asked. Yeah, Carla, said Leslie, what's inside? Nettie looked at Carla, waiting for an answer. Well, said Carla, Today I have peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly? Asked Buster in disbelief. Peanut butter and jelly? Leslie and Nadie asked together. Peanut butter and jelly, said Carla, biting into her sandwich. I like to be different. The end. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, I think this book is hilarious, but it's got a very, very good meaning to it. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is how to analyze a character. 
So when you analyze a character, that means that you deeply observe a character. So if we're talking about Carla, we're going to deeply observe her. So when you deeply observe a character, you look at several different things. And I would like you to repeat after me. You look at their words, appearance, actions, thoughts, and feelings. All right, so we know your words, that's your dialogue. That is what the character is actually saying that comes out of their mouth. So you might hear this called text evidence or something in your third grade classroom. All right, appearance, we're talking about the physical appearance. What does this character look like? How do they dress? Um, those types of things, their physical, you know, what age are they? Their physical appearance. Your actions, and we always do this in my classroom, your action is something that you do. So what does this character actually do? It's different than words. Words are what you say. Actions are what you do. Okay, and then thoughts and feelings. What is the character thinking? And we get to see um, as the reader what the character is thinking. Sometimes the other characters in the book don't get to see. So what is that character thinking? And what is that character feeling? Okay, and we can see how they're feeling based on their, um, you know, what they're thinking or even based on the illustrations. The illustrations give a lot away about what a character is feeling. So when you analyze a character, you deeply observe the character. You look at the character's words, the character's appearance, the character's actions, and the character's thoughts and feelings. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually analyze the character Carla in this um, book. So what I need you to do is if you have a piece of paper or a chalkboard or a whiteboard or anything to write down, I want you to go get it right now because we are going to draw, uh, draw a stick figure and analyze this character. So you can do this with anything that you have at home that you can uh, write with or draw on. Okay? All right. So, I've got my blank piece of paper, and I'm going to draw the best I can, just like I want you to do at home, and we are going to draw a stick figure, okay? So, I want you, so I'm going to start at the top, I'm going to draw the head, I'm going to go down, draw my legs, and my arms. Easy peasy, draw your stick figure. Okay, and because I know this is Carla, I'm going to give her a little blonde hair. And I know she kind of had some pigtails going on. So I'm going to give her some little blonde hair. There's her little braided pigtails. Okay. All right. So this is Carla. Alright, so on each part of Carla, her arms and her legs, we are going to put um, one of the, how you analyze a character. Okay, so in this first one, we're going to, on her first arm, we're going to write appearance. So we're going to talk about her appearance on this arm. Over on this arm, we're going to talk about actions. Okay, on this leg, we're going to put some words from the character. So some dialogue. And then on this leg, we're going to put some thoughts and feelings. So go ahead and label your character. And I'll be honest with you, that's the best I got. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start with appearance. So what does it say in the book? And I can look at the appearance right here. I mean, I see Carla right there. So 
I mean, is she old? Is she young? Is she a girl? Is she a boy? How's her hair look like? Okay, so just based on this cover, I know that she's a girl. I know that she's young. She's in school. Seems like elementary school. Um, and I know that she's blonde and she wears her hair in little pigtails. So that's exactly what we're going to put. That's her physical appearance. I can explain her to you. She's a girl, she's young, and she has blonde uh, and pigtails. I guess I should say blonde hair. I can add that. Okay, so we've analyzed her physical appearance. Okay, now we're going to move on to actions. Remember, an action is something that you do. So what is something that Carla in the story does? What does she do? When you think of Carla Sandwich, the book, what does Carla do? Well, she makes sandwiches, and not just regular sandwiches. She makes special sandwiches or unique sandwiches. That's what we're going to say. So I know, and I'm just going to use my little um, bullet point here. She makes unique sandwiches. makes unique sandwiches and I do know that she always tries to share her sandwiches when anybody asks her about her sandwich she says you know would you like some or I brought plenty I brought extra so I know that she makes unique sandwiches and that she always shares well she always offers to share so we'll do that offers to share so actions that Carla has, she makes unique sandwiches, and she always offers to share. Okay, now we're going to go down to words. Now, when you look at the words, what do you think Carla says that keeps popping up over and over? Well, what comes to mind for me is that Carla says several times that I like to be different or my sandwiches are creative. She says that I like to be different at the beginning of the book. And at the end. So if we look on page one, and I know you don't probably have the book, but it says right here, it's different. I like to be different. And then if we look on the last page of the book, Carla says, I like to be different. And that's kind of a common theme that we get the whole book. So we're going to say, those are her words, I like to be different. Now I'm going to put them in quotation marks because I've taken this word for word from the text. So she says, I like to be different. Okay, she says, I like to be different. She says the beginning at the end at the end. And something that she always says after she says, you know, she explains her sandwich, she always says, would you like some? She always wants to share. So I am going to add that as well. Let's see, where am I going to put that? I'm going to put it over here. She said, would you like some? And she says that several times, so this kind of goes with that. It's okay if your paper looks very creative like her sandwiches. It's cool. And both of these support her actions. She makes unique sandwiches, and then she says, I like to be different. She always offers to share, and then she says, would you like some? Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about is thoughts and feelings. So at the beginning of the story, um, Carla is very confident. She likes her sandwiches. She wants to share. In the middle of the story, Carla it feels very sad, and she feels excluded because everyone is making fun of her. So we're going to say sad, excluded. And then by the end of the story, Carla is happy again. So we're going to add that. And it's okay. The characters change. So it's okay to have three different spots on here. All right. I really hope that you enjoy analyzing a character. You can do this at home with any book. You see a character, draw you a stick figure. You always look for appearance, actions, words, thoughts, and feelings. Thank you so much. See you later, guys.